So good morning. I'm Jamie Rosendahl with Roots Down. I would like to introduce you to our first day of vlogging. And we're going to do a vlog called the Fruitful Cities Vlog, where we're gonna be focusing on uh, urban agriculture and city infrastructure, and talking about how we can really do amazing programs in the future to make food security better in our cities. Uh, to launch our vlog today, we have a guest uh, with us. Um, some of you may know, um, Mayor Ted Terry of Clarkston. Um, we're here in his hometown right now. We're at Refuge Coffee this morning. And um, we're going to be asking Mayor Ted some questions about urban ag and seeing how he responds. And we're gonna start a conversation. So good morning. Hey, good morning, Jamie. So how are you doing? Very good, thanks good. for being here. Yeah, awesome. So the, the first question I have is, what about our program what about Roots Down program enticed you to move forward with, with what we're doing in urban agriculture? Like we, we pride ourselves in, in focusing on a little bit different um, model for urban agriculture and focusing on some of the um, equity models for farmers and different training mechanisms for farmers. So what about our model for urban agriculture really got you interested in our program? Well, you know, look, as a mayor, um, I am sort of responsible for every aspect of uh, the city, yeah. uh, whether that's policy making, uh, police, potholes, trash, uh, landscaping, our green spaces. And, you know, uh, I uh, want to live in a city uh, that is beautiful, that is healthy, um, that provides opportunity wherever anyone goes. And what I see in the Urban Grower Program with Roots Down is creating, um, one, beauty um, and healthy living, number two, but also, um, you know, that opportunity and where you see, you know, a patch of grass or, you know, sort of a, a vacant lot um, or, um, you know, potentially where if you're going to plant some trees, crepe myrtles, you could plant something that would be productive and, and bring opportunity, um, whether it's economic opportunity or just helpful opportunity to our residents. Um, you know, we want Clarkston to be a city when you, you know, drive into it or bicycle into it or walk into it, that you feel like that you've stepped into another world, right? Um, a world that um, is healthier, has more opportunity, more freedoms. Right. I kind of always think it you know, the landscape should be an indicator of how healthy the people are. Like our trees and our, our city landscaping should look and emulate the diversity of our, of our people. And here in Clarkston, we have a diverse amount of people here. So it's really amazing um, that we have the opportunity. I mean, right here at Refuge Coffee, we're gonna be changing over the landscape to edible and useful landscapes um, and maybe helping uh, another revenue stream for the coffee truck to do some tea herbs and make some tea um, every week from the stuff coming from their yard. So yeah, that is very, that is very true. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. So mayor Ted, so we, we love Clarkson and we want Clarkson to benefit from programs like this. Um, we feel that our program is actually a really good pioneer pilot project. And we want to make sure that we have a strong pilot so that we can bring it to other cities. Um, as much as we love Clarkson, how do you think in your in so many words how do you, how many ways can it benefit other cities um here i say locally like starting off locally like you know what in so many ways can benefit uh, other cities for urban agriculture yeah well i mean i think you know you, you mentioned it earlier um you know when people talk about landscaping and you're sort of rolling into a city, um, you know, first impressions make a, a, a big difference, particularly for cities. Um, you know, there's 530 plus municipalities in Georgia. Uh, right. Can you name them all? Uh, and, right. you know, and we have 159 counties. Um, and, you know, as an elected official, we're always trying to kind of set ourselves apart to be unique or different than, you know, a city down the road or for people to, you know, remember us and, you know, right. say, oh, when I visited that one town, or that one place, it was really great and tell other people about it. So they come and visit us. And then local businesses benefit from that economic, you know, development. Um, and so the opportunity with, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> edible landscaping, um, productive urban landscaping, uh, more farming is that uh, it's unique. Uh, it's not something that you really see that much of, you know, we hear that Atlanta is doing work in urban agriculture. We hear uh, like Seattle and other, you know, sort of communities, uh, but in Clarkston and I'm sure many places around Georgia, you know, there is opportunities uh, to really not just, 
create that um, productive urban landscape where they're, we're actually growing, you know, our own food, um, but also a memorable, you know, an imprint on visitors and people who um, are, are stopping by um, in our town to remember, you know, how it felt, you know, to be around something that was different, that wasn't just a cookie cutter, you know, landscape, um, but right. that it was something that uh, was beautiful um, and that maybe they walked away with, you know, their own tea leaves or with, you know, some sort of harvest, um, right. you know, as a gift. I mean, I would love in Clarkston to produ be producing so much food here that when people came to visit, we'd be like, here's your baskets of food and, and you know, and crops and, and flowers and things that we have so much of it. We need to give it away. Yeah. Uh, we want to create that bountiful harvest um, that we can share with other people. Um, and I think, um, you know, if you, if you talk to a lot of our residents and I would argue any resident, you know, in Georgia, they would say, yeah, we would love to have more opportunity to grow our own food, um, right. and, uh, and to be outside and to meet our other neighbors. Um, you know, the infrastructure that cities build right now, uh, requires that you hire someone, um, to do that landscaping, usually a private firm. That's sort of the big model these days is you hire a private firm, they cut the grass, they blow the leaves, they trim the, you know, the crepe myrtles and then they leave. Right. And the model I think here is, is full participation. One, our public works department is learning how to do more than just mow and blow. Um, it's actually being these urban growers and then inviting our residents and even our visitors to participate in that. And through that participation, um, you get a chance to meet your neighbor or meet you know, strangers right. um, and, and, and really you know, build and, and be involved in that community, which is just such important. That's an important, it's one of the most important aspects of being in a city is building community. Yeah, and I mean, we have, uh, I've always felt as a farmer that food brings people together. And I think that we're already as a city you could always, you could you could you know more than anybody that we're spending a lot of money in our city to mow grass so it's just a little paradigm shift it's just changing these grass landscapes into more edible landscapes and understanding that the input that you put in you can actually get something out of and you're also benefiting the, the native ecology around you i think that's a good point i think um uh what you said makes a lot of sense i think cities are already spending this money why not spend the money to initiate programs that could benefit the whole community yep. because grass as we both know and both love grass so much it's not really a great ecological solution for a landscape yeah and it's exactly. expensive yeah it's very expensive grass is very expensive yeah. awesome <laughs> okay so my next question for you is in what in your opinion what has urban agriculture been missing so we've seen models we we have been focused on uh, atlanta kind of started this whole initiative with hiring a um, urban ag director, Mario Camberdella, and we've seen urban agriculture grow. And as a farmer, when I, when I was in North Georgia, I watched urban ag um, grow from a, a, an idea in Atlanta to more farmers markets. But what, in your opinion, is urban agriculture missing and what, you know, what gaps need to be filled? Yeah, you know, I think um, just creating a more, I would just say, dynamic, um, you know, paradigm. And so, you know, if we only think of urban ag as, um, you know, community gardens, for right. instance, where everyone's going to have their little box um, and grow their little small little box of crops, um, then we're missing out on a lot of, you know, potential opportunity um, and opportunity to build that community. Um, we had a, a visioning session, you know, earlier this week uh, with um, residents and we had, you know, six uh, Nepali Bhutanese, you know, Clarkson residents who, uh, you know, quite frankly, just said, we don't understand why you make us farm in these little boxes. <laughs> you know, we want to farm, you know, in the, on the, on the ground. It was pretty great to hear. Uh, and, you know, and so, you know, we were acknowledging, I was like, yeah, you know, like, um, I think like maybe it was like the victory gardens, you know, from during world war two, that kind of got people, Oh yeah. Every, you know, American will have their little garden. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a sort of a sign of the times. Um, but what we know in Clarkston is that we have amazing, uh, agricultural knowledge from around the world. And right. so when a Nepali Bhutanese refugee, you know, new American resident of Clarkston says, yes, we actually, we think we can have a farm here and we could, um, have chickens and live animals um, and beekeeping, and we could have, you know, grow, um, sort of a, 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 a farm paradigm. Um, one, that's just, you know, one going to create more, more yield, more harvest. Um, it's going to require that there be more people involved in it. So it's not just you, 
you know, with your garden gloves on and your little garden hat and you're just, you know, scooping things up, it's actually going to, you know, have to involve more people. Right. Um, and that might be a little bit, you know, scary for some people who are like, no, I don't want to talk to people. And, you know, obviously there'll still always be a place for people to have their own little beds. Um, but we want to create that opportunity um, and create different, you know, um, sort of modes or inputs for people to say, you know what, I really love trees and I want to be a part of planting thousands of fruit trees um, and edible bushes in Clarkston. And that's going to be my thing. Or um, someone, someone say may say, you know, uh, I met a a wonderful Somali woman um, several years ago who, uh, when we were first talking about creating a, a micro farming ordinance, you know, in Clarkston, she got really excited because she said that she makes the best goat milk cheese. And she said, if you get goats, Mayor, I will come and milk your goats and make you Somali goat milk cheese. And I was like, this sold. And so, an offer. you know, and so I, you know, I never would have thought, you know, oh yeah, I could have a goat and I can milk it or have someone milk it and they can make, you know, Somali goat cheese. Um, but now I'm really excited for that opportunity. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the possibilities become unlocked when you create more of those, um, opportunities for, and more input, right. um, and just more diversity there. And so, you know, we, the, as, as, as diverse as Clarkston is in terms of ethnicities, languages, and religions and backgrounds, um, we should think the same in terms of creating diversity in our, um, urban landscapes. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your input. Um, we we feel at Roots Down that urban agriculture could be so much more. It could be a, a much more robust program than it is now. And I think it's just thinking outside the box. Um, and you know, we're we're looking at doing this pilot pro project in your city. So we're really excited to have you on here to talk to us a little bit about that. Um, it's it's tough being a pioneer and it's tough like blazing the first trail uh, through this process. Um, it doesn't seem like you're you're scared of it or phased by it at all, um, which is which is awesome. Um, I, I feel that uh, we um, we have a big vision and we have a, a lot of work ahead of us, um, but I feel like we're going to make a great team to push this forward. So I really appreciate you and your time um, to interview with us on the Fruitful Cities first day of their vlog, uh, first vlog. Um, yeah. So I, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Mayor Ted. Great. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Yeah. Appreciate you.